Hello everybody. Today we're going to go over the dated if function. We'll be using numbers for the Mac. However, this should work for the most part the same in Excel and Google Sheets. A couple things before we get started to be aware of. Leap years will affect your answers and outputs. And these formulas only show outputs and answers for completed time frames. Okay. So, Let's go ahead and put in our formula. And as always, you can use the equal sign in your cell or you can use this formula function button. Let's go ahead and hit equals, type in dated if, find the function. We have three parameters, start date, end date, and calc method. Let's go ahead and put in our start date, end date, calc method. And there are six different calc methods that we'll go over here in just a minute. Hit the check mark. Let's go ahead and drag this down. And now we have six different answers, and each answer will differ depending on the calc method. OK, so what does this first calc method mean? The D means completed days. D is for days. And as I mentioned before, leap years do matter. So you notice from 1, 1, 16 to December 31st, 16, we have 365. Now if we change this to 15, you see it's 364, and that's due to the leap year. So just be aware of that. Now we can go ahead and actually skip ahead in time, change this to 2020, and you'll see that the output updates. So this is the number of completed days from January 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2020. Okay, let's go ahead and just change that back. Now, the next one is the number of completed months. So here we have January 1st, 2015 to February 1st, 2016. And this is going to go through the entire year of 2015, that's 12 months, and then it, and it's going to include January of 2016, so 12 plus 1 is 13, so it's going to show you an answer of 13 months. And the reason it doesn't count this February yet, even we can change it to, say, February 21st, the answer is not going to change, and that's because February has not completed yet. Now, as soon as we change this to March, the answer will update to 14, see, 14, and that's because February has completed, okay? So that was one of the notes from earlier. Just remember, only um, completed time frames will factor into these functions, okay? The next one is similar to the previous two, except the difference is that it's going to show you years. The Y is for years. Instead of days and months, we have... Uh, completed years. So let's show you here we have completed years of 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that's six years. And let's just show you if we change this by one day from, let's go one day back to the 31st 2015, this output number will change to 5, and that's because 2015 has not completed yet. Okay? Okay, so let's go over these next three calc methods. MD is the number of days since last completed month, and only the most recent previous month. The YM is number of months since last completed year, and it's only the most recent completed year. The YD is the number of days since last completed year, and only the most recent year. Okay, so what do I mean by only most recent when I, I kept saying that for these three? Well, if you look at these start dates, these start dates for these three MD, YM, YD calc methods are basically ignored. And you can see why, what I mean, as I change these dates, watch these three outputs here. 
this 30, 11, 364, okay? So let's change this date to 2011. You're gonna see nothing changes, okay? And I'll explain this here in just a second. Let's change this start date to 2000. So like 16 years ago, okay? Still, nothing changes. Let's change this date here to 2005. Okay, nothing changes. Now the reason for that is because in this first example, it's only the number of days since the last completed month. The last completed month in this example would be Let's see, that would be December of 2014, and January 1st, 2015 is considered day zero. Okay, why is it considered day zero? That's just the way it works, but you can see, you'll change it, and you'll see this changes to zero. And then it's only gonna show days after that completion date, what is considered the completion date by the formula function, January 1st. So as we can see, we change this to 31. Day one is day zero, and it's gonna show you an answer of 30 completed days. Or you, you could say since um, day one has not completed yet, it's zero. Now as soon as you go to day two in the second of January, only one day has really completed because it wouldn't be the second if that day had completed. So you can think of it as the first is day zero, or you can say, well, the first hasn't completed yet, so you can't start your counting yet, okay? Uh, I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but if you think of it, one of those two ways, one of those two, two ways will make sense to you. Either the first day is day zero, or the first day isn't over yet, so you can't start counting yet, okay? And it works basically the same for the rest of these, but let's go over them anyway. So the next one is the number of months since last completed year. And again, it's only gonna be the last completed year because you can see we've gone all the way back to the year 2000 and it didn't change this answer output. So the last completed year would be 2015. It's only gonna take this end date into consideration and the number of months that have completed is 11 because, again, like we kind of mentioned before, even though we're on the 12th month, it's not over yet, so you can't count it, okay? So let's show you an example. Let's put this at one. And again, you see this is zero. And the reason, as we mentioned before, is um, the first day or the first month, is counted as zero, or you can think of it as since it's not over yet, you can't count it yet. Now, as soon as you change this to a different month, it's going to start counting. It should count February as one, and uh, actually, it'll count January as one because it's over. February is over. March is almost over, but not quite over, so this should be two. Okay? So that's how. Those first two work. Now let's go over the last one, which is number of days since last year, or since last completed year, only most recent year. And as you can see, this start date is, you could argue that that is essentially ignored because it's gonna go off this end date parameter and it's going to only include the last completed year. The last completed year, even though 2016 is almost over, it's not over yet. So the last completed year would be 2015. And since the last completed year started, there have been 364 days that have passed. Now, let's change this to completed, 2017. And this should update to zero, and it does. And the reason is the last completed year was 2016 and no days yet have completed. You're on January 1st, but it's not over yet, so no days have completed. And that is how the dated if function works. 
These first three calc methods are probably more common. And these last three may be a little bit more confusing, but just remember it's only essentially going to consider the end date. It's only going to show completed time frames. And if you're a little bit confused on why you might see zeros, just remember it's again back to that completed time frames. It can it counts the first as zero or day zero, or because it's not completed yet, you can't count it yet. Okay? So that is the dated if function. And make sure you join us again next time.